Over the last decade, Ian Slider, aka Space Laces, has grown to become one of the most revered and celebrated artists in bass music, not just of recent times, but of all time. With his extraordinary range in genre production and near flawless sound design to go with that, it's hard to dispute that he is one of the most skilled and accomplished producers to ever grace the modern bass scene. But how exactly did he get to this point? What happened in the earlier part of his life and career for him to be at the incredible level he's at now? To put it simply, where does the genius come from? What's the context for it? And how did it form? In this video, I'm going to detail the career of Slider up to this point, diving deep into the events that have led him to base superstardom and propelled him to GOAT status among the electronic music fandom. All done in the hope of understanding the man, the modern myth, the legend that is Space Laces. Whilst there isn't much available online information regarding Slider's youth and upbringing, it is known that he currently resides in Louisville, Kentucky, the understanding being that he grew up there too. One could hazard the guess that he had some sort of musical training in his younger years given the melodic prowess of a lot of his music, but he first started producing electronic music as his first alias Corn and Beans from around 2006. Discussion abounds as to how old Slider currently is, with some stating he's in his mid-twenties, others claiming he's significantly older. The number that often crops up is 24, which would mean Slider was just 9 years old when he started putting his earliest cuts on multimedia entertainment site Newgrounds. Could you convince me he was that young when he started out? No. Although it would go some way to explaining the seemingly inherent musical genius he's revealed more and more over time. Regardless, Slider started as a predominantly house and electro producer, using Newgrounds to share his music with users of the site, who would deploy his music in various animations and games, quickly spreading the word about his talent. Not long after, he adopted the name Space Laces and put out several high-paced, high-energy bangers on SoundCloud, from Disco Bloodbath to Deep Space, which dropped on the aptly named House Recordings. This garnered him support from electro house legend Lazy Rich as well as Porter Robinson before getting his first big break in 2012. At this point he was picked up by Jeff Abel, aka Excision, who'd grown aware of his exploits as Corn and Beans, and now Space Laces, giving him a spot on his X-rated remix compilation which dropped on Dead Mouse's Mousetrap Records. Triple X. With years of production practice in the bank, and operating mostly as an unknown quantity, Slider had finally got the main label release his efforts deserved. It was clear that he was getting into his stride and coming into his own as an artist. That is until disaster struck, when it's reported that soon after the Excision remix came out, Slider's main hard drive corrupted, losing all his music files in the process. Quite how different his career would have panned out had this not happened, no one will ever know, but it represents undoubtedly the most renowned setback Slider's faced to date. Something that derailed him significantly, but not entirely, however, as a new opportunity arose alongside Excision to propel his name further into the bass consciousness. It's at this point that Abel's influence and help in launching Slider into the bass stratosphere can be felt most. Alongside Downlink and KJ Sorka, Abel formed a new supergroup under the name Destroyed, visually inspired by the Alien vs Predator film series with the trio clad in space creature latex gear and armed with electronic instruments when performing live. They would go on to write one of the most highly regarded and successful albums of the modern bass era, titled The Invasion, with five of the tunes featuring Slider and a post-LP release called Get Stupid to go with that, so he turned out to be an effective fourth member. This inclusion of Slider would prove to be pivotal in garnering him a loyal fanbase and cult following from a relatively early point in his career, the loss of his music very much a thing of the past, as from here he went boldly on from strength to strength. Slider began to assume his position as one of the most technically efficient and forward-thinking minds in bass music. Out came a slew of super impressive originals from Dungeons & Dragons, one of my personal favourite tracks of the 2010s, to the iconic digital gangster which allegedly took him two years to make, and Fangbanger with Bro Safari as well. All the while, Slider was adopting quite the online meme persona through his quirky pencil drawing artworks, the integration of the e vocal sample, post after post of the weirdest pictures on his Facebook page, and his Wizard of Balls SoundCloud account? I mean, yeah. I am the Wizard of Balls. I cast many spells to shrink balls. I have large balls, so this is an issue of grave concern. But with that came a genuine connection between Slider and his burgeoning fanbase, even though many hadn't seen his face by this point, and his direct interaction on social media was nothing on that of other big name producers. It was all adding to the mystery of the Space Laces project, and with that came an enormous level of hype fit for only one label. 
Following successive appearances on Excision albums with Push It Up and Throwing Elbows, Slider would land singles on the Schism-owned Never Say Die Records. Firstly, Bug Bass on their Black Label XXL compilation, and then Cruise Control on Never Say Die Volume 5 a year later. Now, you might be sat there thinking, a few singles here and there over a few year period, really not that impressive, but given the setback he had, the way he'd recovered to mix it with the biggest artists and labels in the game on the biggest projects was testament to how highly he was being regarded. Furthermore, the rarity of his releases was welcomed in what was starting to become an increasingly saturated bass market. He was clearly a quality over quantity kind of artist, something he very much keeps to today. That being said, at that point there was still a distinct feeling amongst the bass faithful of wanting that bit more from him, and little was to prepare us for what was going to come next. Initially it was business as usual as Slider kicked off 2018 with another string of Never Say Die single releases, but fans were none the wiser as to what they'd end up formulating. Firstly, joining Excision yet again for his Never Say Die single debut with Rumble, the artwork for which is seen to have kickstarted the stamp motif in the modern dubstep scene, and a track that would end up featuring on Abel's fourth full-length LP Apex released that August. And following that cut, on the solo front, Slider came through with Talk, a screechy, near-seizure-inducing dubstep howitzer, and Kaiju, a savage, full-throttle bass house destroyer, the largeness of which lived up to its Godzilla sampling. It was a coupling of tunes that would prove to be the foundation for his biggest, most highly anticipated work to date. No doubt, you don't know what it's about. To the delight of bass fans the world over, Slider's Never Say Die debut EP, also, his debut EP ever, lest we forget, Overdrive dropped on Never Say Die on June 6, 2018, turning out to be a project for the ages and well worth a wait. A colossal, riveting, multi-genre outlay that definitively announced him as one of the scene's very best, and stood as a fantastic representation of his style and sound. I gave a more extensive look at the individual tracks in this retrospective review I did a year ago, but the bottom line was that rarely had bass music been produced at such a consistently high quality over a whole project, and so it instantly stood as one of the scene's very best debut EPs of all time. The extent of Slider's genius, however, was far from realised, as near the end of that year fans got the truest insight into the scope, ambition and reach of his artistry. On November 20th, 2018, Slider dropped Voltage 1, the first in a new mini-mix series that would see him showcase a wide range of short-form ideas he'd worked on over the years as Space Laces, demos and rarities from the vault, as he put it. It was the perfect pairing of masterful music and masterful idea, spanning tens of different bass genres seamlessly melded into one coherent journey, whilst being an incredibly clever way for him to satiate the appetites of fans wanting new material from him, without having to round off each of them into whole tracks just yet. It was also something no one had done in bass music to that level before as a combination of idea and production quality. I could give you all my favourite tracks and EPs and albums at the end of each year, but when it comes to picking my favourite piece of bass music over the last half decade, Voltage 1 stands above all else. Need I mention the fact that it also sparked a showcase trend within the bass scene? Suppose that goes without saying. There was even the intergalactic visual experience to go with it as well, everything tied together so effectively and it felt like a complete story as you were transported in and out of multiple worlds from different times in history. At this point, more than ever, it felt like Slider had reached a point of perfection he'd yearned for since he started out, an excellence that has more than continued into Voltage 2 and 3, the latter dropping in March of last year. As he's climbed into the highest echelon of artistry over the last few years, his music has grown to resemble everything bass fans look for. You have some of the most gargantuan stadium-sized instrumentals this scene has ever witnessed, laced with screams of John Cena, or samples from Pee Wee Herman, and that in many ways is the beauty of bass creation. With it being so technology-based and accessible, there's no limit as to what one can include in their music, as long as it isn't copyrighted of course. Moreover, with the music itself mostly being as wild and ostentatious as it is, you can lob in any kind of sample within reason to make it that bit more over the top, and Slider has deployed that technique over and over with aplomb. His output in the last couple of years beyond Voltage has been more characteristic of his usual form on the release front, non-plentiful. However, more than dwell on what we may not have got from him recently, with the amount of time between big official releases, to me it begs the question as to what we're going to get from him next. Could it possibly be a debut solo album, one that might sport collaborations with Zomboy or Must Die perhaps, who it feels kinda crazy he hasn't collaborated with yet? Maybe another 5 track plus EP, perhaps Voltage 4 at some point mid next year with a wealth of singles to go with that as he's been doing recently. Beyond that, when will the mooted collaboration with Skrillex come out, an ID that's been doing the rounds for about a year or so now? 
The beauty of the Space Laces project is that there isn't really ever any way of knowing for sure what he's prioritising at any given moment. His mostly reticent social media presence and rarity of release combine to provide both mystery and huge anticipation. Even small things like the subliminal messaging hidden in the waveform of Voltage 3 reading Stop Cramping My Style. What is meant by this? Who is it aimed at? Regardless, he will never let us know the answers to these questions, so it just becomes another thing adding to the mystery and allure bound up in the Space Laces project. But in rounding off this video, and returning to the notion of understanding Space Laces, both Ian himself and the actual project, how indeed does all of this allow us to understand him and his work better? We're aware of some of the challenges he's faced, for one encountering the lowest of lows and losing all his music. Most don't know what he sounds like, but we do know what he looks like. It isn't like he's sporting a mask or helmet to take away from Slider the individual. Basically, there's enough available about him to humanise what he does while still keeping the Space Laces project completely mysterious. He doesn't necessarily put himself out there, yet has one of the strongest fan bases around, because of the relatability of the little of his personality that we get. He's also probably comfortable keeping a distance between him and his fans now, having gotten used to that through his experience of Newgrounds in his formative years. I think the mentorship and guidance of Excision should also be acknowledged. It's interesting to think about whether Slider would be where he is now without him, and simultaneously whether Excision's career would be quite at the level it is right now without the excellence of Slider aiding him in many of his biggest releases. What's clear, however, is that by now Slider is by no means dependent on others to succeed. In turn, looking into the future, the excitement for his brand and music is constantly growing without a limit in sight. The rarity with which he releases only adds to this, exacerbating the perfectionist mystique along the way. It's welcomed in a zero shelf life scene that has become far too saturated and seemingly prizes quantity over all else. Thus far, he has written boundary breaking music and in the process has become the poster boy an exact representation of what modern bass music should be about and sound like. Everything about him tells us he's the genuine star of his era, and the best thing is that it feels like he's only just getting started. Hey guys, just going to do a little end bit here. Uh, not going to be doing this for every video, at the end of every video, but just thought I'd do one for this first video. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little insight into Space Laces and uh, just very excited to show you all this new content that we have on the channel going forward. Just to say and make clear, this is the first one of its kind on the channel. So there might have been a couple of moments here and there watching that where you thought, oh, that could have been a little bit better or I would have maybe improved that a little bit. Again, this is the very first time that this is happening on this channel and I feel like a lot of improvement is gonna be made uh, in a short space of time, so over the next few weeks or so. So we've got a few editors on board, uh, so just keep that in mind heading into the next few. That being said, any constructive feedback that you might have or criticism, anything of that kind, of course, feel free to leave it down below. I mentioned this, of course, in the update video that I dropped on Monday, but my Patreon link is linked down below in the description and in the pinned comment of this video. Yeah, all the review stuff that I've done and had on the main channel, this channel up until now, is now on there. So yeah, all on Patreon with more available as well in the second tier. On that note, just want to give a massive shout out to all these legends who have pledged in the last couple of days or so. And yeah, look forward to having more of you on board soon. A ginormous shout out, of course, goes to Rin, who visualized this script, the first one for this new direction on the main channel and brought it to life, of course. And the other editors that we have on board going forward with these videos who will be revealed in due course. And also beyond that, Mr. Half Prism, who's making the thumbnails for these videos and which, you know, yeah, as you can see, are very colorful gripping and exciting, that kind of thing. But yeah, all their necessary links are in the description box down below. And finally, a shout out to Volksgeist, a massive inspiration for this video and the directional change for the channel overall going forward. And yeah, go and check out his channel if you want deep dives on hip hop or rap music and yeah, just music in general. Beyond that, again, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up, you know, help your boy with the algorithm, all that kind of thing, and subscribe and hit the bell as well if you want to be notified whenever one of these video essays goes live. And I do also just want to say thank you and uh, yeah, just uh, very grateful for your support, your kind words in the last couple of days or so in the uh, evolution that I'm going through with this channel. It gives me a good idea of... Uh, just how people have taken to it and what they can look forward to going forward, basically. But 
yeah, I will see you next on the Patreon for weekly review content. And if not, I will see you here again in a couple of weeks for the next video essay, which is very exciting and which I can't wait to show all of you. Until then, keep it naughty. If it's naughty, then you know, and see you then. Peace.